Tonight I want to speak to you about a topic in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you'll uh, turn with me in your Bibles this evening, 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to read verses 12 through 20. A very, very important topic. I believe a quintessential cardinal doctrine of our faith. That just about every other thing hinges upon. Because if this were not true, we wouldn't need to be here. Today I want to talk to you about the... Well, it's an apologetic argument that Paul writes here in 1 Corinthians 15. If the dead rise not. If the dead rise not. Not. 1 Corinthians 15, if you will stand with me one more time if you're able to as we read verses 12 through 20 and then we'll pray. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, and this is 1 Corinthians 15, 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be, that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. And they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the firstfruits of them that slept. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege it is to open your word this evening and, uh, Lord, glean from its wisdom. I pray, Father, that you would just use your word to touch our hearts tonight. If there be one here that does not know you as Savior, Lord, I pray, Father, that tonight your Holy Spirit would draw that soul to you. I thank you, Lord, for each and every soul that's come out tonight. And I pray, Father, that you would help us to put away the cares of the world, and to focus solely upon your face. We thank you, Lord, that your son, Jesus Christ, is not in the grave. He's not in the tomb, Lord, but he rose again. I thank you, Lord, that he lives and he's here with us today. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Not too long ago, I, uh, I stopped by the side of Highway 29 at the Morgan Cemetery between Molino and Walnut Hill, Florida, and I was paying my respects at the grave of my brother who died at the age of 26, leaving some three little kids. The day we lowered his body into that grave, it just pulsates in my mind like a neon flashing sign of pain and heartache. I remember another day years later in Thailand when I had to grab my shovel and hop in my pickup truck to our churchyard to dig a grave for the child of a fellow missionary. The ground was so hard, it was filled with rocks, and I remember it's like each shovel was just full of sweat and pain, and I had to build a little tiny coffin for that baby from the best wood I could find, and we, we laid a little cold body of a baby, a missionary's child in that grave. This past year, I've been to more funerals than I care to think about. But there is one thing that gives me comfort above all, and that is the faithful promise of God's word of a blessed hope that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
You see, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 tells us that we should comfort one another with these words that we don't have to sorrow as those who have no hope. Folks, we have hope. Amen. 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 1 Thessalonians 4.14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. We just celebrated Easter Sunday last week and every Sunday by the way to proclaim the world to the world that we as believers hold to the belief that Jesus Christ is not in his tomb. Over in Israel at the garden tomb in Jerusalem there's a sign hung on the door and you can only see it as you're walking out of this empty tomb. It says, he is not here for he is risen. I love that, folks. Christ's body isn't rotting in, his, in a grave. His, his tomb is not in some sarcophagus over there in the Middle East. We believe that Christ was in a borrowed tomb a borrowed tomb, three days and three nights, and early in the morning on the first day of the week, the stone had been rolled away and the Redeemer of my soul had risen from death to life, casting away all shadow of doubt, all reservations of disbelief, and, and in His absolute power over all that exists. He has victory and he has conquered death and hell and the grave. And somebody ought to shout amen. 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 He's not dead. Right. He's alive. Right. Jesus Christ is alive. I don't speak of him in the past tense. You know, we should not have to speak of our loved ones who have gone on to be with the Lord in the past tense because... He's alive. They're still alive. Very much alive. Just like all who rest in Him. Awaiting the resurrection. You see, Christ's resurrection was the first fruit, the earnest, the consolation, the promise that because He lives, we shall live also. Because He arose we shall also arise because he's conquered death. We too will have victory over the grave. That's, uh, Colossians chapter 3 tells us that in him is our life because he is alive. Amen. <clears throat> this certainly should cast away your, your lack of faith, your doubt, your, your hesitation, your skepticism and what lies beyond the grave. You know, I, I, I just have to be honest with you folks. I think one of the hardest things for me as far as faith was concerned or is concerned to wrap my mind around is what happens on the other side of death's door. The resurrection should calm your misgivings and allay your disbelief. But Paul starts by saying, But how say some among you that there is no resurrection from the dead? Paul starts out this divine lesson of apologetics of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ with a simple question. How say some among you that there is no resurrection from the dead? There were those in the days of Paul that did not believe that the dead would come back to life again. They did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. Just like there are those in today's world all around us that still don't believe in the resurrection of Christ. They pass it off as a legend. They pass it off as a fairy tale story that was made up by some deluded followers of, of a religious sect in ancient times. The fact of the matter is this is a very, very important question. It's the quintessential cornerstone of our faith. And all other doctrines, all other practices, all of our beliefs hinge upon this one thing. If Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead, folks, 
We can just pack it up and go home. So what if there is no resurrection from the dead? Paul asked this question, and let's look at the implications of whether, if this was a true statement. You see, Paul goes on to say, if there be no resurrection of the dead, in verse 13, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. You see, if the dead not rise not, then Christ is not risen from the dead. And if Christ is not risen from the dead, then Jesus Christ was not the Christ. Jesus was not the Christ. Jesus was not the Messiah if he didn't rise from the dead. If Christ was not risen from the dead, then Jesus is not the Savior. If Christ was not risen from the dead, then Jesus is not God, nor worthy of our worship. If Christ is not risen from the dead, then we shouldn't believe in Christ we should just trust our own hearts and the philosophy of the world. If the dead rise not, Christ is not risen from the dead. <coughs> Y'all, uh, excuse me this evening, my throat is really dry. If the dead rise not, then verse number 14. If Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain and your faith is also vain. If the dead rise not, then preaching the gospel is vain. What I'm doing up here tonight is meaningless. What we do every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, what our pastor does week after week, month after month, year after year behind this pulpit is absolutely meaningless if there is no resurrection. And if our preaching is vain... There's no reason for me to give my life for the gospel's sake. The preaching is vain. There's, there's no reason to even listen to a preacher. If our preaching is vain, there's, there's, there's no reason to do any good works because all your good works are meaningless in the long run. If preaching the gospel is vain and life itself is meaningless and random and pointless. If the dead rise not. And Christ is not risen from the dead. Then not only is your preaching vain, but faith in the gospel is vain. That word means it's empty, it's meaningless. Without reason, without goal, without purpose. You see, if the dead rise not and there is no resurrection, then there's no reason to come to church. There's no reason to follow any religion. There's, there's apparently only this life if Christ is not risen from the dead. So you should do whatever it takes to make the most out of this life. Just eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die if Christ is not risen from the dead. If the dead rise not and faith in the gospel is vain and there is no morality. There is no right. There is no wrong. There is no sin. Just do whatever you want. If Christ be not risen. Verse number 15, if the dead rise not, then the apostles are liars. They're false witnesses. Let's read. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. You say there's no resurrection, then obviously we were lying. Obviously the Bible is lying. Obviously there is no truth here. The Bible's a lie. The story of Christ is a lie. If Jesus did not rise from the dead. That's a big if, by the way. If the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, verse 16, then is not Christ raised. In verse 17, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. There he says it again. And ye are yet in your sins. How about that? If the dead rise not, Christ be not risen then there is no remission of sin and your guilt remains. 
If the dead rise not, Christ did not pay for your sins. If the dead rise not, then the blood he shed and the sacrifice that he made was all for nothing. If the dead rise not, you are still an unforgiven wretch wallowing in the consequences of your sin. If the dead rise not, the guilt of your sinful past will remain upon your shoulders and haunt you forever. If the dead rise not, no one, no, not a single one can ever, ever, ever forgive you of your sin or wash away the uncleanness of your heart. If the dead rise not, verse number 18, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. The dead rise not, then death is a certainty, and all who have died will perish. If the dead rise not, we'll never see our loved ones again. If Christ be not raised, heaven does not await the believer. If the dead rise not, and Christ is not raised, there is nothing past the door of death but darkness and oblivion. The dead rise not. Verse number 19 If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If the dead rise not, then we as deluded fools have no hope beyond this short life and are of all men upon this world most miserable. If Christ be not raised, Christians are just wasting their time on meaningless drivel. If Christ be not raised, we would be the most depressed group of people on this planet. If Christ be not raised, we should eat and drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. And instead we waste our days worshiping. If Christ be not risen from the dead, we spend our days worshiping a dead Lord. Singing praises to him who is not risen if the dead rise not. I know that sounds... Horrifying. And it is. But look at verse number 20. Amen. Look at verse number 20. But, but now is Christ risen from the dead Amen. and become the first fruits of them. That slept. Folks, if the dead rise not, we have no hope. But we can look back 2,000 years ago and see that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did rise from the grave. And because he has life, we may have life in him. Jesus Christ The Son of God came down that stairway of heaven and was born in Bethlehem. He fled to Egypt. He was brought up in Nazareth. He was baptized by John. He was tempted in the wilderness. He performed miracles. He took away my sin and yours and went all the way to the cross. And there, while hanging on the cross at Calvary, Jesus was mocked and teased and taunted. And they said, if ye be the Christ, come down from the cross and save yourself. Jesus didn't respond to them, but it was just like he was saying as he hung there on the cross, you just wait till Sunday because you are going to see it's better for me to come up from the grave than to come down from this cross. Jesus committed his spirit to the Father and he drooped his head down into the lock of his shoulder and there Christ died. He died He didn't just pass out. Don't believe the swoon theory. He died. The Bible says that he died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the earth quaked and the rocks rent and the veil was torn in two. He died until the centurion said, truly, this was the son of God. Jesus Christ died. Three days he was dead. Three days they mourned. Three days it seemed like all hope was lost. 
To them, it seemed like a long time, but it was just three days. You see, no matter what they tell you, Jesus spent three days and three nights in the tomb. So after he was crucified on Wednesday, amen, he was laid in the grave and Thursday was a gloomy day and Friday was a dreadful day and Saturday was a terrible day. But then came Sunday and the stone was rolled away. So you think that Christ was dead and there was no resurrection? Think again. Because Christ is God. Amen. And God is a spirit. Elliot Lockridge wrote this. He does not die by old age. He does not die by disease. He does not die by the hands of man. He does not die by the darts of the wicked. He does not die by the rebellion of angels. He does not die by the foolish heart of the atheist. He does not die by judgment. He does not die by pronouncement. He does not die by summation. He does not die by denial. He just does not die. Jesus Christ is alive. There are still people today in disbelief. And I'm here to tell you that you need to believe, folks. Jesus is alive. And he lives forevermore. Death is swallowed up in victory. He has conquered sin. He has conquered death. He has conquered hell. He has conquered the grave. And because he has life, we can have life also. Because he has victory, we can have victory also. Because he saves, we can have salvation. And because he lives, I will now live forevermore. Let's all stand. As we prepare for an invitation, I hand it over to the pastor. Jesus Christ is alive. You know how I know he is alive? You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Does he live within your heart? If not, Get it right tonight, Brother Walt.